So let's pick it and let's learn how to make our own attributes. Click OK. Now we have all of these attribute fields here. This object is just regular text. It's static. Once it's inserted, it's not going to be changed by the user. However, this job number is an attribute definition and you have your properties manager palette which can make some changes to it. You can change the tag, you can change the text style, the value that it's going to default, justification height, it works and looks just like text. So let's create a new one. If I want to create an attribute definition, I have to come here, pick it, and this is the little window that you get. You can make it invisible. So, well, why would I want to do that? Well, you can assign a value. Uh, maybe it's to count something, or maybe it's a serial number for a part, but you don't want that number to show up on the drawing. That's very likely. So you can make it invisible. You can make it a constant. That gives it a fixed value for block insertions. That means it's not going to change. You can put a verify prompt on here and it will prompt you to make sure that the attribute value is correct when you insert the block. Now that can be very useful. It can also be very annoying. So it just depends. Do you want to have to do everything twice or do you want to make sure that you, know, you did it right and you don't want to have to go back? That's up to you. Now the preset option will put in a default value when you insert a block. So it won't even ask you or prompt you to insert something. It will just automatically insert the default setting. You can lock its position so that it can't be moved. It can be on more than one line, etc. So you pick your insertion point. You're going to pick it on screen here. And you have to define the tag prompt and default. Let's say we want to know who designed this. We have a checked by. We have a drawn by but we don't know, maybe someone else designed the project. That'll be fine. So let's say, design by. We'll put in the prompt. A lot of times, these are just going to repeat themselves. And the default, let's say, designer. Now if you click here, we can insert what's called a field. A field is a little bit more advanced for what we're trying to do here real quick, but essentially a field will look into the drawing and gather information for you. So if you have a hatch pattern or a closed polygon and you need to know the area of something, you can tell the field to, hey, look at the area of that specific object and put that information here in my attribute. And that's really cool. Now you have different text settings. Your justifications, left, the line, fit, center, etc. We'll just stick with left and the text style. Go with notes. Is it going to be annotative? Not in this case. And how high is it going to be? You know, the text height, well, that's defined here by our text style, so we don't have any control over that. You can even have it rotated. Once you get all these settings the way you want, you click OK. And if you've put spaces in your tag, well, it's going to yell at you just like it did to me. So you have to go to your tag, and what you can do instead of a space is to put an underbar or a dash or something. Click OK. And now we find a place here to put it. This really isn't designed for something like this, but that's OK. I'm just going to place it right there, and there we go. Now it's on whatever layer I've set it to layer zero, we may want to match the layers here, or we may just want to change everything to by layer. For right now, I'm just going to leave it. When we're done, we can test the block out, see what it looks like. Say, ah, there it is, it says designer right there. Now when I double click on it, is it going to be an option? Yes, it is, and I can change it all that I want. That's fantastic. The block works properly. Click close. and then click Close Block Editor. Yes, save the changes. And wait a minute, where did it go? It's not there. It didn't work. Well, this gets kind of tricky. You're gonna to have to use something here that's a block attribute manager. Now, don't laugh when I tell you the name of the command or what you're going to type in for it, because it really is a command. And it's one of my favorite commands to tell people about because they don't believe me when I tell them it. the command what we need to do will automatically update all the instances of an attributed block 
so that it matches the changes that you've made. Otherwise, it's going to stay the way it is. All right, the command you need is Batman with two T's, B-A-T-T-M-A-N. That's the Block Attribute Text Manager. It's a mouthful. So you see here, it gives you a list of the types of blocks you have in your file. We want to update the title block. And we get a look at it, say, yeah, this is fine. If I want these to be in a different order, it's meaning not where it's going to be on the screen, but meaning on how you're going to be prompted for them when you insert the block. So if you want any of these to be different, like maybe we want the sheet title to be the first one. Select it, click move up. So now when we insert it, the sheet title, which is probably more appropriate, will be prompted first. Since we've added in this new attribute, we need to sync all of the other instances of the block. So click the sync button. Move this out of the way, you'll see it fixed it. You can click apply, click OK. And that's been fixed everywhere. So those are attributed blocks. They're very useful. If you're creating a site plan for a residential area and you need to create the storm drainage pipes or the storm drainage structures, you can create a labeled attributed block that will ask you to put in a part number or, hey, this is the number or the designation for that structure. It's structure 7 or structure E4, etc. And so that's a great way that you can do something very quickly by creating that block and then adding it to a multi-leader so that you can very quickly label and mark your structures or whatever type of item it is that you need to label.